As part of his overall effort to increase the burden of government, President Obama is attacking so-called tax havens. Obama and the rest of the crowd in Washington want bigger government. So attacking low-tax jurisdictions makes sense from that status perspective. Now, most of us in the real world want smaller government, so we like it when governments feel competitive pressure to lower tax rates. This is a legitimate public policy debate, and we can have a fair fight about issues such as tax competition, fiscal sovereignty, and financial privacy. But a fair fight means both sides should be honest, and the White House, to be charitable, is playing fast and loose with the facts. Now, I'm not naive. A certain amount of dissembling and exaggeration is part of the game in Washington, of course. But this administration is going overboard. Mr. President, it's time to stop spouting nonsense. I'm Dan Mitchell of the Cato Institute. In this short Center for Freedom and Prosperity video, we're going to look at two examples of reprehensible demagoguery. President Obama loves to talk about Ugland House in the Cayman Islands, implying that there is something shady because there are more than 12,000 companies registered at that address. On the campaign, I used to talk about the outrage of a building in the Cayman Islands that had over 12,000 business, businesses claim this building as their headquarters. And I've said before, either this is the largest building in the world or the largest tax scam in the world. That's a clever soundbite we just heard. But the president and the president's economic people surely realize that the address where a company is registered has no relation to where a company is headquartered and where the company has its operations. Heck, there is a building in Delaware that is the legal home to more than 200,000 companies. Maybe the vice president, a former Delaware senator, should bring the president by for a visit. Another bit of White House nonsense is the assertion that going after low-tax jurisdictions will generate $100 billion more tax revenue every single year by reducing illegal tax evasion. My opponent supports tax havens that let companies avoid paying taxes here in America. Tax havens that cost $100 billion every year. You know what will work? Shut down those tax havens. That's a good job from the president. But now let's look at the facts. The president's own international tax proposal is only projected to collect about $200 billion over 10 years, not $100 billion every year. And the vast majority of that money is generated by tax increases on U.S. companies trying to compete in world markets, proposals that have nothing to do with tax evasion. If you look at the portion of his proposal that actually deals with supposed evasion in low-tax jurisdictions, the White House itself estimates it will generate just $8.7 billion over 10 years. So we start with demagoguery on the campaign trail about collecting $100 billion every year from supposed tax cheats, which would mean $1 trillion of new revenue over 10 years. And when the dust settles we get a proposal for $8.7 billion over 10 years instead. And even that number almost surely is an exaggeration. So what does all this mean? If the White House is resorting to dishonest and misleading numbers to sell something, maybe, just maybe, that's a sign that the underlying proposal is a bad idea. As always, we hope you can share this video with your friends and colleagues. I'm Dan Mitchell of the Cato Institute. On behalf of the Center for Freedom and Prosperity, thanks for watching.